Well, thanks, Indu, for that kirtana. Thanks for the one before that you showed it. And thanks to all of you for coming out in a snowstorm to start the year 2023. Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder of Charya of the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. Om Aginati Marandasya Garangana Sarakya Chaksuru Miritam Yena Tashma Ishi Hirvayamaha Sri Chaitanya Manovishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutare Vayam Rupa Karamayam Tarati Swapanandikam. That's what we want to talk about beginning a new year. <clears throat> I think a lot of people think that this is going to be another same old, same old year, same problems, same difficulties. They feel like they are stuck in a rut in life, going into the new year, coasting, autopilot, expecting the same thing, same problems, same struggles, same income, same job, same level of joy. Well, we'd like to speak some hope and faith into you tonight to ignite something on the inside, because God is a God not of decrease, not of maintaining, but he's a God of Increase. He has new seasons of growth, new seasons of influence, new seasons of abundance out in front of you. For those who stretch their faith and keep him first place in 2023, it's going to be an exceptional year. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Yama, Hare Hare. It's going to be a year of surprises. It's going to be a year where Krishna amazes you with his goodness. A year you accomplish your dreams, overcome obstacles, see breakthroughs in areas that you might have struggled in for decades. I'm predicting God-centered changes in the lives of his devotees. A new, a good New Year's prayer, it might sound something like this. Krishna, please help me to use the 8,760 hours of this year, the wisest way that I can for you and for your glory. Lord, give me enough happiness to keep me sweet, enough trials to keep me strong, enough sorrow to keep me human, enough hope to keep me happy, enough failure to keep me humble, enough success to keep me eager, enough friends to give me comfort, enough wealth to meet my needs, enough enthusiasm to make me look forward to tomorrow, and enough determination to make each day better than the day before. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. If you pray like this, get ready. Krishna's gonna release his favor in a greater way. You're sowed the seeds. Now it's just a matter of time before you're gonna see the harvest. Expect Krishna's favor. Let go of little dreams, little plans. This is going to be an above and beyond year. Some of you have had difficulties, but those winds which have been holding you back in 2023, they've shifted. They've changed directions. Instead of blowing against you, they are going to blow for you. Instead of holding you back, they're going to propel you forward. Tonight I'm speaking victory into your future, not just to make you feel good. They're healing words of life, full of power from the Most High Lord. That's why when you hear them, there's something that wants to ignite, that wants to take birth on the inside. Prabhupada, our spiritual master, he empowered his early followers to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. Once he was spinning a globe of the world, saying, my disciple Brahmananda will go to Africa, Sudama will go to Japan, Bhagavan will go to Europe, Ridayananda will go to South America. And some of these young people at that time were challenged even to tie their own shoes. <laughs> but Prabhupada called out the seeds of greatness that he knew were in the inside. So tonight, we're bearing witness to that same indomitable spirit embedded within each and every one of us. You were created to rise higher. You were created to live a life of victory. You do well to rise up and say, yes, this is for me. 
Yes, 2023 is going to be my year. I'm stepping into a new season. I'm stepping up to be the hero of faith that Krishna God created me to be. I'm putting on a new attitude. I'm enlarging my vision. I'm going to go into this year with a new fire. Krishna's favor is based on two things, obedience and timing. When it's your season, you can't miss the opportunity. You can't sit back. You have to step into it. I don't know how many of you know about the baby locusts. Its wings are very small in proportion to its body. It can't fly with these wings, but it can jump 200 times its bodily height. One day, this little locust hears the winds blowing, the leaves rustling in the top of the treetops. Something deep inside of it says, this is my time to jump. Now, the timing is critical. You have to be sensitive and recognize when that arrives. This baby locust, he gives, gets lift off from his powerful legs with which he can jump 200 times his height. And he gets up in there into the wind and then his wings are all he needs to keep himself up there soaring along. Unfortunately, some people have been down for so long they can't recognize the wind. They can't recognize when their time has come. They can't see opportunity when it opens the door. True, I've been down for so long, I don't even know what it means to be up. <laughs> I'm struggling with this pandemic. I can't off, get off the ground, true. I don't have the wingspan. I don't have the talent. I've made too many mistakes. They don't realize that if they would jump at the right time, catch those winds, they would go higher and further than they could have ever thought possible. It's not by our power, but it's by the breath of Almighty God. When you hear the breathing of God, that's when you're going to feel the wind beneath your wings. When we held the grand opening of this Spanish Fort Temple 21 years ago in 2001, Neela Sheshachari, she was a scholar who taught at Weber State University. She got up on the stage and spoke of the history of the Indian community in Utah. I don't know if you knew this, but the first Indians came to the Cache Valley in 1896. They were farmers from the Punjab. For a hundred years, by the time we opened this temple, there had been Indians in Utah. And so we wanted to seize the opportunity of being the first temple which represents the Indian faith and the Indian community in Utah. We knew that with the increasing numbers of North Indians and South Indians, it's only a matter of time before there began to be two, three, or even four temples. And in fact, now there's two Sikh temples, there's the Ganesh temple and several others. But we wanted to be the ones to catch the breeze and be the be make history as the first Indian represented temple that opened in Utah. We opened in 2001, and we were the first one, but just barely because in 2003, the Ganesh Temple, in 2004, the Sikh Temple, later on, another Sikh Temple. But the point was, our timing was perfect. We caught the breath of God, and we rode those thermal winds to a place in history. Krishna, God, is all powerful. He creates and controls uncountable universes. He can open doors no man can shut. If you're right in the middle of his service and what he wants you to do in your life, then difficult things like opening a Hare Krishna temple in an area that's 90% Mormon become easy. All you need is the breathing of Almighty God in your direction. So our message tonight is don't miss your season. Don't Go into another year expecting more of the same old, same old. Don't waste another year feeling sorry for yourself, stuck in a rut, when you know you should really be out there stretching your faith. Pitch your tent in the land of hope for 2023. Move out of the nothing ever happens to me subdivision. 
moved out, move out of Mediocrity Township, moved out, move out of That's My Limitsville, pack up and relocate to the land of more than enough, to the suburb of far and beyond favor, to the place where with Krishna God, all things are possible. Can I tell you that what's in front of you is much greater than what's behind you? That's why the windshield is so much bigger than the back window of your car. Your future victories are going to make your past victories pale in comparison. What Krishna has for you in your future, if you keep him first place, you can neither imagine nor even believe. He's saying to you tonight, keep me first place and you have not seen anything yet. You think you're good now? You think you're blessed now? No, I have mind-boggling things in your future. Difficult situations which have been going on for 20 years, log jams which your family's experienced generation after generation are gonna turn on a dime. By this time tomorrow, you could be out of debt. Your child could come back home. The doctors could pronounce you cured. You could meet the boy or girl of your dreams. Krishna has blessings with your name on. The question is, are you ready to receive them? Are you expecting God's favor? Do you believe that 2023 is going to be your year? If we keep him first place, his blessings and his favor will chase us down. You'll be surprised at what Krishna has in store for you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This on the slide is a battle scene from the great epic Ramayam. There were two brothers, Bibishan and Ravana, who were uh, living in Lanka. Ravana was the demoniac king, and Bibishan was the devotee brother. Now, when Ravana kidnapped the supreme personality of Godhead's wife, Sita, it was a lot of goddess of fortune. Vibhishan knew that now, although the winds had seemed to favor his brother for a long time, to the point that he built his city entirely out of gold, once he kidnapped the wife of Lord Ram, Vibhishan put his finger to the wind and knew that the winds had changed. If they were before, behind his brother in the past, now the winds are, gonna, are blowing against Ravana. Ravana insulted Lord Ramachandra, kidnapped his wife, and kept her captive for one year. And because he offended Lord Ram in that way, Ravana's whole kingdom was destroyed, his army and relatives were defeated, and he himself fell dead to the ground. Everything that Ravana had built up with great effort, pain, and suffering was annihilated because of his refusal to acknowledge Lord Ram. Now, Bibishan, although Ravana's blood brother, was a great devotee of Lord Ram. Bibishan knew that whatever Ram wants to protect, no one can kill. And whoever Ram wants to kill, no one can protect. And therefore, Bibishan was not at all surprised to see the destruction of Ravana, his army, and his cities. But what did surprise Bibishan was that after Ravan was killed and all of his followers bit the dust, Ram handed over the entire kingdom to Vivishan. Vivishan had no idea the tremendous favor that he had stored up because of one thing, his faith in Ram. Ram, or Krishna, is a god of surprises. What we learn from this example of Vibhishan is don't ever rule out surprises. One good break, one phone call, one meeting with the right person, the situation turns around because you've been faithful like Vibhishan. Krishna suddenly takes you from the overlooked brother, puts you on the throne, from the bottom to the top, from the pit to the palace, from the back to the front, all because of one thing, your faith in Ram. Krishna suddenly brings you forward. Suddenly you hit that wind. Suddenly your season comes. Favor, influence, health, abundance. 
I don't know about you, but on this New Year's Day, 2023, I feel excitement in my spirit. I feel there are things lined up that we could never imagine. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In the Nectar of Instruction, Prabhupada writes, I don't know, uh, one should not be impatient in discharging devotional service, but should take instructions from the spiritual master and execute, execute them with patience, depending on the mercy of Guru and Krishna. The successful execution of Krishna conscious activities requires both patience and confidence. What do we mean by confidence? The devotee thinks Krishna will protect me and surely give me whatever help I need in order to achieve success. If we've been faithful, even if it's been taking too long, but you've been keeping a good attitude, even when people haven't been good to you, you've been good to them. You've been chanting, even when there's a pandemic going on, you need to start feeling excited. Krishna wants to surprise you. He wants to blow your mind. You're planning ordinary. Krishna's got extraordinary up his sleeve. Some of you are thinking, survive? No. Krishna's thinking, for my devotees, the operative word is thrive. Get your hopes up. Be a person after Krishna's own heart. One devotee declared, surely, surely, this is called confidence, Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. In the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Mat Chita Sarva Durgani, Mat Prasadam Tadishida, Tad Cheda Hankaram, Shrotaf Yasi Vinashicha. Krishna assures Arjuna, if you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work, in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. In the 11th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is no higher possible gain for embodied beings in this age than to surrender fully to the holy name of the Lord, putting all their hope and faith in chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hari Hari. What is hope? Somebody defined hope as the ability to hear the music of the future. And faith is the ability to dance to it today. You can't have faith without hope. So the day that you stop being excited about your future, it's the day you stop living. Would you agree with me today? A lot of people are breathing, but they're not alive. They're existing, but they're not living. This was once written on a tombstone. Here lies Zeke Carter. He died at 45, but was buried at 75. <laughs> what happened to old Zeke? At 45, he quit dreaming. He quit expecting. And we're trying to bring some people back to life. We wouldn't have got up this morning. God would not have given us the blessing of another day had he not more victories in your future. People may have pushed you down. Others may have discouraged you in your dreams, but they're still alive. And today, by Krishna's grace, we're stirring up the embers of the great plan that Krishna has for your life. Albert and Albrecht Durer were brothers, both of whom had artistic talent, but they were poor. They drew straws to see which one would work in the mines and pay for the other brother's tuition at the prestigious nearby Nuremberg School of Art. Albert got the short straw and Albert went to the school for four years. Albert graduated and as they were toasting this success, the one brother said to the other, now I can get employment as an artist and pay the tuition for you to go to school in your turn. But Albert said, look at what four years in the mines have done to my hands. The bones in every hand have been smashed at least once. Lately I've been suffering from arthritis so badly that I cannot even hold a glass to return your toast much less make delicate lines on a paper with a brush. No, brother, 
for me, it is too late. Now you would have thought that was the end of the story. Tough luck, Albert. But his brother was so moved by his brother's sacrifice that he asked him to pose in prayer for him. And he drew those very same hands in the prayer mudra with a pencil sketch. That has become one of the most famous works of art in all of Western culture. It's called Praying Hands. And this simple drawing conveys in itself the silent story of brotherly love and sacrifice. It's also a reminder that Krishna sees every act of sacrifice. Krishna knows every time you took the high ground, he's noted every time you picked up the beads and chanted his holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Some of you might think it's over, it's too late, you're too old, you missed your chance, you've made too many mistakes. Can I tell you, it's not over until God says it's over. Just do your part, stretch your faith, rekindle those dreams. We can't make it happen, but when we believe, that's what activates Krishna's power. That child you've been praying about, it's not gonna be another 20 years. It's gonna start making good decisions, running with the right crowd this year. In business, that career which has been stuck, you're not gonna be stuck there for another 10 years. Promotion is coming this year. You're not gonna to have to suffer for that, with that addiction for another five years. You're gonna get clean this year. Thank you, Lord that this year I'll meet the person of my dreams. Thank you, Lord, that this year I'll turn my health around. Thank you, Lord, that this year I'll write that book. This year I'll establish that temple. This year I'll, that business will take off. The greatest lie is that what you're facing is permanent. Things are never going to change. I'm too old. It's too late. I'll never get out of debt. I'll never meet the person of my dreams. If it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. Don't believe those thoughts. Because it hasn't happened in the past doesn't mean that Krishna is not on the throne. It doesn't mean that it's not stored up for you. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have your name on it. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was starting the Sankirtan movement in West Bengal 500 years ago, and the Muslim uh, magistrate personally came and broke the Madanga drum, and he banned any public chanting of Hare Krishna at that time under pain of death. Now, the Muslims were in absolute, they had a chokehold of control over all of Bengal, the power of life and death over anyone. Anyone who could divide him without any due process or trial or witnesses could be put to death right on the spot. Looked like the Sankirtan movement was over practically before it even got started. Looked like the death of the whole movement in its very infancy. But Lord Chaitanya is God. He's the devotional incarnation of Krishna. He told his followers, no, it's not the end. It's the beginning. And that very evening, he marched on the Kazi's house with 100,000 followers, drums, cymbals, torchlights. The Kazi's guards, soldiers, they all ran for the hills. The Kazi was found upstairs, hiding under his bed. And after a short conversation with Lord Chaitanya, he retracted his order. He's, he not only said, I'll never do anything more to hinder the Sankirtan movement, but he promised that he would do whatever he could to facilitate it, not only him, but many generations to come. And to this day, the descendants of that Kazi from 500 years ago are favorable proponents of the Sankirtan movement. So what do we learn from this? No opposition, no critic is bigger than the name of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya was Krishna's devotional incarnation, predicted that the chanting of Hare Krishna would spread to every town and village in the world. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I joined in Australia in 1970, and in Melbourne, I was serving there. We would go out and chant and distribute books in the street, and at one point, the city council of Melbourne decided they wanted to shut down 
our street chanting and book distribution, just like the Kazi had 500 years ago. They had this old law in the books. It, it, it was 100 years old. And they invoked this old law and started arresting devotees for exchanging money on the streets. At one point, I think we had over a thousand citations against us. <laughs> they took their best case. They took the case they thought they had the greatest chance of winning. And they took it to court. They threw everything they had at us. They spent $20,000 prosecuting this case. We were defended for free by the Australian uh, Civil Liberties Union and we got off. So all the other hundreds and hundreds of cases were dismissed. Now in 1985, at the centennial celebration of the founder of the city of Melbourne, that same city council, maybe different people, but the same body, which had earlier tried to stop the Sankirtan movement, asked the devotees during the massive celebrations of the centennial year to do kirtan, 300 devotees did kirtan just before the fireworks celebrating 100 years of Melbourne history. What a turnaround. So we can't wait to see the dream come true. Then we should just believe. Believe before the dream comes true. Faith says, I'm not going to see it before I believe it, but I'm going to believe it so that I can see it. Faith is the greatest power in the world. Why? because it's the main thing that activates the power of the Almighty Lord in our lives. Believe it, then see it. We're asking you to believe it now, to get your hopes up now, to now start celebrating what Krishna is about to do in partnership with his devotees. Our request is to start acting now, like 2023 is your year. Start walking now like 2023 is your year. Start thinking that 2023 is your year. Start dressing like 2023 is your year. Believing that 2023 is your year. Don't start the year by making excuses. Don't start the year by being a doubter. Start the year by being a believer. Get up every morning, chant the names of the Lord, announce it by faith. Lord, I want to thank you that this year is my year. This year, you're going to surprise me. This year, I'm going to see promises come to pass. This year, things are shifting in my favor. If you will activate the almighty power of God in this way, I believe you'll have a year of abundance, a year of joy, a year of health, a year of victory. I believe 2023 will be the prelude to an above and beyond future, an exceptional life this time around. And next time, you'll go back to home. Back to God. If any of that sounds good to you, <laughs> join me in raising your hands and we'll repeat together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We'll do some more singing and dancing, shall we? Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Swami Prabhupada.